carpe diem, seize the day. The opportunities are there, but you got to reach out and pick them up. In investing, I'm in a no called strike business, which is the best business you can be in. To me, entrepreneurship is about creating change, not just creating companies. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you as well. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So in today's video, we're gonna look at 10 lessons from some of the world's richest men. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with lesson number one, be resourceful with Jeff Bezos. I spent an unusual amount of time with my uh, grandparents and especially with my grandfather on the ranch. So he had a ranch in South Texas and I would spend my summers there from age four to 16. And they, when I was four, they were taking me for the summer to kind of give my parents a break. You know, it's sort of because they were so young um, and it was useful. I was a handful, I'm sure. And, uh, and anyway, he... he he, he, he created the illusion for me when I was four years old that I was helping him on the ranch, which of course could not have been true, <laughs> but I believed it. And, um, and then as, by the time I was 16, of course, I was actually helping on the ranch. I, you know, I, could, I can fix prolapsed cattle. I can, you know, we did all of our own veterinary work. Some of the cattle even survived. Um, <laughs> and uh, we fixed windmills and laid you know, water pipelines and built fences and barns and fixed, that, fixed the bulldozer that you guys talked about. And so one of the things that's so interesting about that lifestyle and about my grandfather is he did everything himself. You know, he didn't call a vet if one of the animals was sick. He figured out what to do himself. And uh, so what does it mean? No delegation? Being resourceful, I think, mm. is the, you know, that you can always, you can't, if there's a problem, there's a solution. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you, as you mature and, and get into the business world and anything you do on a team, you very quickly realize that <laughs> it's not about just your own resourcefulness, it's about mm -hmm. team resourcefulness and how does that work. And Lesson number two, find your obsession with Bill Gates. Computers, when I was young, were super expensive. And my friend Paul Allen and I actually snuck into places at the University of Washington where they had computers that weren't being used at night. And so we were fascinated by what the computer could do, but very few people were getting exposure. We had to go out of our way and we were lucky that we did it all. And so then when the idea of moving the computer onto a chip that Intel would make, and that would make the computer literally millions of times cheaper, than the ones we were using, so both more powerful and available to people on a personal level. Then the idea of, okay, it would be very different, the software you needed, the way the industry would work. We were super lucky to uh, be there when that was happening. So what did your family think? Did they say there's something wrong with this young man, he wants to just do computers? They knew I was obsessed with computers, that I would skip athletics, that I'd go in overnight, that I'd you know, leave the house sometimes when they prefer I wouldn't go work at night on these things. And so it was kind of considered a little strange. And the big moment was when I said, instead of going to part of my senior year, that I wanted to go work uh, for a company writing software. So they were great about allowing that to be my hobby. Lesson number three, find your circle of competence with Warren Buffett. Ted Williams wrote a book called The Science of Hitting, and in it he had a uh, picture of himself at bat and the strike zone broken into, I think, 77 squares. And he said if he waited for the pitch that was really in a sweet spot, he would bat 400, and if he had to swing at something on the lower corner, he would probably bat 235. And in investing, I'm in a no-called strike business, which is the best business you can be in. I can look at a thousand different companies, and I don't have to be right on every one of them, or even 50 of them. So I can pick the ball I want to hit. And the trick in investing is just to sit there and watch pitch after pitch go by and wait for the one right in your sweet spot. And if people are yelling, swing you bum, ignore them. There's a temptation for people to act far too frequently in stocks simply because they're so liquid. 
Over the years, you develop a lot of filters. And I do know what I call my circle of competence. So I, I, I stay within that circle and I don't worry about things that are outside that circle. Defining what your game is, where you're going to have an edge, is enormously important. Lesson number four, learn from the mistakes of others with Carlos Slim. Have you had failures? Failures? Yes. No, the, the, what I say to my children, you need to have failures, but try to make small failures. <laughs> small mistakes. Also in business and in life. Not to make big mistakes. Do you learn from mistakes? Always. And from the mistakes of the others, you need to learn also. It's more important to learn of other mistakes that make your mistakes to learn. Also, if you want to have more confidence, check out my 254 series. It's free. The link to join is in the description below. The biggest risk you can take is not taking any risk. If you're doing anything interesting in the world, you're going to have critics. The only way, if you absolutely can't tolerate critics, then don't do anything new or interesting. You really have to believe the internet's going to be mainstream. A lot of people are going to get out there and use it. Lesson number five, think things out for yourself with Larry Ellison. Think things out for yourself. Come to your own judgments. Don't simply conform uh, to conventional ways of thinking, conventional ways of dressing, conventional ways of acting. That a lot of this, uh, a lot of things are, are based on fashion. Even morality at times is based on fashion. It was once, fa you know, slavery was once not considered not to be immoral. Uh, you know, people are, you know, people are shocked that the, uh, the ancient Greeks had slaves, that, that, that we had slavery in this country as recently as, you know, 130, 140 years ago. So there are more moral values. You have to really go back to first principles and think things out for yourself, whether they're scientific principles or moral principles or business ideas or product ideas. You have to think things out for yourself. Lesson number six, create change with Mark Zuckerberg. To me, entrepreneurship is about creating change, not just creating companies. And you know, the, the most effective entrepreneurs that, who, who I've met care deeply about some mission and some change that they're trying to create. And often they don't even start because they're trying to create a company. Right? And you know, that's how, how I think about um, you know, my connection to, to all, all of us here is, you know, I was getting started. I, um, you know, I, wanted, I care deeply about giving everyone uh, a voice right? and giving people the tools to share everything that they cared about and uh, bringing a community together. And you know, it started small in, in one university. And I didn't think it was going to be a company at the time. Um, as a matter of fact, I was pretty convinced that at some point someone would build um, something like this for the world. But uh, you know, I thought that that would be some other company that you know, already had thousands of engineers and was used to building stuff for hundreds of millions of people around the world. And you know, what ended up happening was um, you know, that no one built it. Right? So we just kind of kept on going. Right? I mean, people said it each step along the way, um, you know, what you're doing all right, maybe college students like it, but no one else is going to like it. And you know, there's not going to be any money in doing this. So, all right, so you only really do it if you care, right? If you're passionate about doing it. And you know, then it started growing, and people said it would be a fad, and it would never be a good business. But you, know, you, you keep going because you care, uh, not because you're, you're trying to create a business. Um, and you know, then there's the shift to mobile, where people thought that you know, it, it wouldn't be a sustainable business. And, um, you know, it, through each of these things, you, you, the, the, the entrepreneurs who I think build things that last for a long time keep going because they care fundamentally about the change that they're trying to create in the world, um, and they're not in it just to, to build a company. Lesson number seven, share the credit with Michael Bloomberg. You never wanted to beat your competition? No, I want to be successful. You said teammates versus competition. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, but, but I mean, at Solomon Brothers all those times, I, you work with other people. One of the ways, incidentally, Stephanie, to really get ahead is to give credit to somebody else. When I say, oh, I didn't do it, Lloyd did that, and he involved me, let me tell you, I'm telling everybody it's me as well, but I've now made a friend, and you respect me because I've shared the credit. And if you say, no, me, 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 I, 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 um, nobody likes you, and nobody respects you, and they think you are exaggerating everything. But to the extent you give credit to elsewhere, the thought of, are they exaggerating, doesn't even come up. Lesson number eight, carpe diem with Steve Ballmer. There's a Latin expression 
which I think is great, I love it. It was in a now very old movie called The Dead Poets Society. But the line of the movie was carpe diem, seize the day. The opportunities are there, but you gotta reach out and pick them up. You've gotta grab at them. Some of you may have already done that at the U, in your classes, in other students that you met, in your extracurricular activities, but grab them. Don't be afraid to make a mistake, because you know what you can do if you grab the wrong one? Drop it and pick up another one. It's okay, seize the day. I think back of all of the, 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 the luck, but also the times that were in front of me to seize the day. I don't know what got me to drop out of business school and come to Microsoft. My parents thought I was a whack job. Neither one of them graduated college and they thought this was really a wild idea. I was lucky, I seized the day. Microsoft, one day some guys fly in from, from IBM and all of a sudden we figure out we could actually provide all the software they need for this thing that became the personal computer. People, Bill, Paul, they had the wisdom to seize the day when that opportunity presented itself. And yet, when you think of all the opportunities, when I think back of all the opportunities I've had, the one that was most important was an opportunity I got in 1969. Sitting in my junior high school class, I was in a public junior high, not very stimulated at the time, and over the loudspeaker, they said that well, a private high school in our area that I'd never heard of was giving scholarship tests that weekend. I told my mother I wanted to take them. She said, that's fine as long as you get a scholarship because we can't afford to send you there. But that's really where I got switched on. Switched on in math, switched on personally, energized in a way that never, never could be turned back. And I am very thankful for that opportunity. Yes, there's a lot of luck in opportunity, but there's a lot of seizing the day. And I encourage you all to reach out and carpe diem, really seize the opportunities that are in front of you. Lesson number nine, set big goals with Larry Page. A lot of times my issue is people are not setting goals that will be something that Somebody who becomes rich or is, could do anything, you got to be excited about working on that for 10 years. So you got to have a big enough goal that you, know, you attract the best people and you retain them and you keep them focused. And then my experience, you don't go wrong. You know, maybe you don't hit it next year or maybe you fail entirely and you discover something more exciting to work on with the same set of people. And lesson number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is work hard with Mukesh Ambani. Put on your running shoes. Put on your running shoes, but remember that personal and professional success is not a sprint, but a marathon. We are lucky to be living in a dynamic world where anything is possible. But it is important to remember there are no overnight successes. You will need to be dedicated, single-minded, and there is no substitute to hard work. And also remember that in this marathon of life is not a rat race. It is important to achieve our goals, but not at any cost. Now I have a special bonus clip with Sergey Brin on how to love the process that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, this is a new potential series on my channel. I would love to know your feedback. What did you think? What did you enjoy? What do you wanna never see again? <laughs> what do you think? Let me know, leave it in the comments below. You've made ginormous amounts of money. What do you guys plan on doing the rest of your life? You've achieved so much already. I think, uh, you know, there are many important things to life, uh, you know, aside from financial or career success. Uh, and in fact, uh, it's not necessarily the ultimate success that motivates you. It's the process of getting there and the uh, technologies or products that you build or uh, in whatever realms you may be in. So I I'm not too concerned about finding something to do. Um, though I do think it'll be based on doing things that I really enjoy. 
uh, and not have some end goal in mind. And if you want to learn the 10 lessons from the world's richest women, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. The number one lesson I could offer you where your work is concerned is this. I visualized this for myself when I was selling copiers door to door.